Hello and welcome to our service on Trinity Sunday. As usual, please do join in with the words in yellow at home as we work our way through this week's service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So we take a moment to prepare ourselves as we come into God's presence. Let us pray. Eternal God, source of all blessing, help us to worship you with all our heart and mind and strength. For you alone are God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we reflect back over the week that has been. We consider how we have let God down, where we've got it wrong, where we've said things we shouldn't have done, where we haven't spoken up on behalf of those who have no voice. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. Trinity Sunday should be every Sunday really because of course we always worship God the Trinity but I find it helpful that we do have a Sunday in the year where we focus on God's nature as Trinity and so we're going to sing the Gloria and as always it's a Trinitarian Gloria it's a way of fully worshipping our Trinitarian God so I'm going to sing a line and I'd like you to sing the same line back to me Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, Son of the Father. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to the Spirit. To God be glory forever, to God be glory forever. Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen, Alleluia, Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, Enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen.
The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 40. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, or with the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens? Who has held the dust of the earth in a basket, or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in a balance? Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord, or instruct the Lord as his counsellor? Whom did the Lord consult to enlighten him, and who taught him the right way? Who was it that taught him knowledge, or showed him the path of understanding? Surely the nations are like a drop in a bucket, they are regarded as dust on the scales. He weighs the islands as though they were fine dust. Lebanon is not sufficient for altar fires, nor its animals enough for burnt offerings. Before him all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless, and less than nothing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading is taken from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13. And now, my friends, farewell. Mend your ways, take our appeal to heart, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with the kiss of peace. All God's people send you greetings. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Did you know that loneliness is considered to be one of the biggest problems that we face in our society today? It's particularly considered to be a health problem. According to some research, loneliness is as bad for you as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Being lonely increases your risk of early death by 29%. We know this instinctively, really. Remember that one of the worst punishments that could be meted out is putting someone in solitary confinement. Since the lockdown, many of us have felt this loneliness acutely. We were not made to be alone. The writers of the creation accounts in the book of Genesis instinctively knew this as well. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God he created them. Male and female he created them. And then in Genesis chapter 2. It is not good that the man should be alone. 
I will make him a helper as his partner. What we don't often think about is that God is not ever alone. God is Trinity. Did you hear it in that quotation from Genesis? Let us make humankind in our image. This is not a single lonely entity speaking. It is something else, something not quite yet defined, but clearly more than one. God is an us, a we. So from the very beginning of time, God is not a singular individual, but a relational being, a trinity. And we humans are made in the image of this God, the Trinity. We're not made in the image of Jesus. We're not made in the image of God, the Father. We're not made in the image of the Holy Spirit. We are made in the image of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, all three. And so at the very heart of being human is the need for community, the need to be in relationship the need to be dependent, the need to be giving and receiving, as that is at the very heart of the God in whose image we are made. If God is Trinity, then equality is at the heart of what it means to be human. At the cause of a lot of the pain and destruction of the world is inequality. Researchers Kate Pickett and Richard Wilkinson identified in their book, The Spirit Level, that the more equal a society is, the better off everyone is. The bigger the gap between rich and poor, the worse off everyone is. We've seen this inequality laid bare in the disproportionate number of people from poorer backgrounds who have died of COVID-19 and in the terrible violence perpetrated against innocent black people around the world and most recently in the case of George Floyd in the United States. The root cause of pain and suffering in the world is inequality. This is because we are made in the image of God, the Trinity. The three persons of the Trinity are equal, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. They are not in a hierarchy. They are co-equal, constantly giving and receiving from one another. If we believe that within God's very self is built equality, then what does that mean for us? What does that mean for what the best for our world should be? Equality is built into the very nature of God. Inequality is an affront to God's very nature, which is why Christians should work hard to include everyone. Jesus demonstrated this through his interactions with people from all parts of society. Jesus spent his time destroying the barriers of inequality between clean and unclean, male and female, and even Jew and Gentile. Equality is at the heart of the Trinity and should be at the heart of our community here. If God is Trinity, then mutual self-giving is at the heart of what it is to be human. The three persons of the Trinity are constantly giving and receiving from one another. It is a reciprocal friendship at the very heart of God's self. If we worshipped God as a single unity, a big boss man, we would begin to prize independence and dominance as the important virtues. We saw Donald Trump this week prizing violence and oppression over justice and peace and standing alone with a closed Bible outside a church. But the God we worship is Trinity, an eternal self-giving friendship, not a scary big boss man in the sky. As Jesus was born into this world, a tiny squalling baby, God came to us in total vulnerability, ready to be changed and dependent on others. If mutual self-giving is at the heart of the Trinity, then it should be at the heart of our community here. If God is Trinity, then constant movement and dynamic creation is at the heart of what it is to be human. The relationship between the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is often described with a Greek word which has its roots in the word dance. It is a fluid exchange between the three persons, moving, giving, receiving. It is the eternal dance of love at the centre of God's being. 
constant movement, constant creation. God is not static. God did not create the world like some divine watchmaker and set it running and sit back. God is constantly renewing and creating and making all things new. God is constantly at work in our world through the dynamic movement of the three persons of the Trinity at work in each one of us. This means that movement and change and creativity should be at the heart of our community here. This is the God we worship, God the Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. When we are not reflecting God's image as Trinity, we find the disease of loneliness blighting our communities and society. When we are not reflecting God's image as Trinity, we find the effects of inequality on all people, rich and poor, a world where white lives matter more than black lives. When we are not reflecting God's image as Trinity, we find ourselves stuck in a rut, not growing, not developing. Our growth is stunted and we are left by the side of the room, not joining in with the great dance. God the Trinity is the God we pray to, the God into whose life you were baptised. It is a dynamic life of equality, mutuality, self-giving, caught up in a divine dance that makes life worth living. May you know the living power of the Holy Trinity and may it fill us that our community may flourish, that we may truly live up to the image of God in which we were created. Praise be to God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So we say together in faith, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. We believe in God the Father, who created all things, for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was slain for with his blood, He purchased for us, us for God, from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, even so come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. We pray for the church throughout the world, where countries are suffering in many ways from all kinds of problems, strife, warfare, disease, climatic extremes, and give thanks for all who work to protect and guide the peoples. We put our trust and faith in you and your teachings, Lord, to give us strength and fortitude. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the rulers, leaders and statesmen of the world, making very difficult decisions to provide the best conditions for their people, especially our own government, trying to keep our population as safe as possible whilst considering the economy. Guide and encourage them in their unenviable tasks and us in abiding by the safety measures put forward. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers, Lord, for the sick and the souls of all who have died recently from whatever cause, particularly the victims of coronavirus. Their suffering is over, but we pray that you are keeping your loving care, their families and friends, many of whom were unable to spend last moments with loved ones. 
that we hold specially in our prayers our associate priest Reverend David Hull, recently diagnosed with cancer, and his wife Chris. Hold and support them, Lord, at this very difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our communities of Clown and Barbara, our families, friends and neighbours, and all frontline staff. Hoping we all keep well and continue to help each other whenever we can. We offer special thanks for Reverend Bryony, working so hard to keep us in touch and able to worship in various ways. We put our faith and trust in you, Lord, knowing you love us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let us gather all our prayers together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we come to our act of spiritual communion. You may wish to change your posture, you may wish to kneel as if you're kneeling at the altar rail. You may wish to hold your hands out with your palms facing upwards to receive the Holy Spirit. In union, dear Father, with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life, I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your Son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus. Dwell in me, and send your Holy Spirit, that I may be filled with your presence. I will leave a time of silence for you to pray this prayer yourself. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory, who are three persons yet one God, now and for ever. Amen.
So let's bow our heads to receive God's blessing. God the Father, who first loved us and made us accepted in the beloved Son, bless you. Amen. God the Son, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, bless you. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who sheds abroad the love of God in our hearts, bless you. Amen. And the blessing of the one true God, to whom be all love and glory for time and for eternity, come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for worshipping with us this week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship. Loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable. And caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity. A generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, here's how you can help.